Hello and welcome to Lunatic TV's October Spook Fest. I am currently bedridden from an injury. Just think whatever you like. So, welcome to my bed. It is a privilege to be here, so bask in it. Tonight's movie is the 2005 film Bewitched. Of course, you should know this since the title of the video and even the thumbnail image you see before clicking the video tells you but whatever. Repetition, repetition, repetition. I grew up with the TV show on syndication on the TV Land Network. Now shows from my childhood air on the TV Land Network. Roseanne, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Full House. And it totally doesn't make me feel old even though I'm only 26. I knew when I saw the trailer for this back in 2005 that I was not going to like this movie. And boy was I right. In fact, I had no idea just how right I was. Let's get a little magical, shall we? That's the best I can do. Well, these credits are awfully peppy. Oh, no, not Shirley McLean. I already knew Kristen Chenoweth is in this. And Michael Caine, whom I also adore. But surely, she always plays such fab characters. Why? Okay, this camera work is going to make me nauseous, and I don't even get motion sickness. See the light. Stephen Colbert, shame on you! Tonight's top story: trouble causes problems. Blue. Okay, Steve Carell doesn't really surprise me, though. He made Evan Almighty. This does not surprise me. She has my car! Ah! Why must it taunt me so? I want a beetle. Not a convertible, and in blue. Gimme! Okay, so she's moved to the valley for a normal life and to not use magic, yet she got the house. I'll take it. Oh, <gasps> wonderful. I'm so happy. It's just, there's one thing. I'm going to need some references. Uh, I don't have any of those. Oh, dear, that's serious. I don't know that we can do business together if we don't have references. Because she used magic to get it. Bye now. Okay. Your life is total instant gratification, Daddy. It's fantastic, isn't it? No, no, it's not. Because how do you know that anyone really loves you for yourself? It's like those rich men who are never really sure why women sleep with them. But women sleep with them, so it's not really a problem. <laughs> oh, that's actually kind of funny. So this is Isabel. She's being an absolute hypocrite because she doesn't want instant gratification, yet she got a house instantly. And her father, Nigel, is played by the fabulous Michael Caine. Hi. It's all in the buttocks. Don't I look pretty? It takes a very secure man to walk like that. You're talking about love, aren't you? What do you suppose it's like? Oh, it's simple. You say I love you to someone you want to go home with, and then when things get messy, you say I don't love you anymore, and that's pretty much it. He's a cynical curmudgeon. I love him already. That was my last thing as a witch. Oh, please. If magic really existed, people would use it all the fucking time. Even I would use it. Do you think I would be bedridden with a knee injury if I had magic? No! Maybe I could go to Hogwarts 
and be best friends with Luna Lovegood, and help Harry Potter fight off Voldemort. I fucking hate J.K. Rowling. I want to have friends, and I want to, and I want to go to the coffee bean where we all discuss our problems, which are absolutely unsolvable. What's with all the toast, and why is it suddenly raining in Los Angeles? I am through with just snapping my fingers and getting my way. No breakfast after 11? Oh. My absolutely last thing. Seriously, it's like almost six minutes in and already I don't like you. You have gone against everything you're saying so far. Isabel, have you ever heard of the phrase, actions speak louder than words? Because I don't think you have. I mean, you conjured up a cat door for your fucking cat. I'm going to get an umbrella. No, Daddy. No, I mean it. No, never again. You'll get wet. What's wrong with frolicking in the rain? I fucking dance in it. Now we're with Will Ferrell, and it's not raining anymore. Yay! Continuity! Will Ferrell plays Jack Wyatt. He's a washed up actor trying to get his career back on track. What the hell happened, Richie? Things were going so great there for a while. Last year in Katmandu. Only DVD to sell no copies. Wow. Okay, that is sad. Even some of the worst films ever made have a cult following. I reviewed Vink's Killing last year. That's on DVD. And what's worse is it has a sequel, therefore, cult following. The list is endless of movies that are famously bad and yet have a cult following and have sold DVDs. So I'm rather curious how and why your film failed so miserably. It's like Paris Hilton's movie The Hottie and the Naughty, which only garnered like 20,000 some odd ticket sales in theaters. Probably didn't help that it was only released in select theaters across the United States. I don't know about international. And I tried to review it earlier this year, but I couldn't actually get my hands on a copy. Now that's bad. So now I'm actually kind of scared for the day when I do end up reviewing it. Lord have mercy on my soul. Here you go, get the generator, baby, let's go! What does that even mean? You know what? I want to know. We think everyone's forgotten about last year in Kathmandu. Unless they saw it. Aw, Stephen Colbert. If you could cook any meal for me, <laughs> what meal would you cook, Tiger? <laughs> Privy made in mine. I will this very day make you a stew concoction made from ox lips, otter's eyes, and all that which is most pleasing in God's sight to lay upon the bountiful banquet that is the dinner table, huh? I could cry. Okay, Jack, your agent is kind of annoying me. Stop it. You look like a douche, and if that was your intent, then I'd say you hit the nail right on the head. What? You're being a pussy. What? You're being a Pussy, 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 pussy. No, no, I'm not. This show tanks. You'll be the bottom right square in Hollywood squares for the next 10 years. You will also be the mayor of Pussytown. You read me? I want to be the mayor of Pussytown. Please stop saying pussy. It sounds so foul coming out of your mouth. And I actually much prefer that word as opposed to its counterpart that starts with the letter C. Get in there and be the sheriff of Ballsville. Oh my God, why are you talking like this? Is this what it's really like? Maybe I shouldn't pursue acting. Or I could just be one of those actors that doesn't have an agent, but ugh! This guy! What the hell is wrong with him? He wants them. You get them. Oh my god! I know you! You played Gideon in Scott Pilgrim vs. The World! You want to fight me for her? Why on earth would you want to do that? Because I'm in love with her. That movie! But you play a douche in that as well. Is that all you know? Bring it! Okay, let's go! Stop 
the fuck? I can't. Just stop. This is what I have to deal with with this movie? It's nine minutes and like 30 seconds in and already I want to hurt someone. I want, I want my own personal makeup team in matching jumpsuits. And a leopard. Or a pet leopard with a diamond studded collar, real diamond. One of these days, I'm going to see a movie that is just far beyond painfully stupid that my brain is just going to explode. This is too close to that day, but it's not that day yet. Well, Jack Wyatt says, get it done, y'all. Oh my god, please. Please. Please tell me we did not just quote Larry the Cable Guy! Get it in! I am going to die. And this movie is the culprit. Hey, I'm turning on the sprinklers in my front yard! I'm happy for you. I'm pretty sure my five-year-old niece could do that. Okay, first and foremost, I do love that house. It is gorgeous and I want it. But moving on to the real matter at hand, she is like a fucking child. She talks like a child, she acts like a child, and yet somehow she's going to survive Los Angeles? Jesus Christ, why not move to the Middle East? I bet you would do swell there. Strawberry blonde white woman with no perception of reality. Oh yeah, you do swell in the Middle East. Oh my fucking god, she's playing with the light switch. It's like that fucking furniture store commercial. Feel what it's like to own top name brands from Aaron's. Yeah, it's 2012, and it's still fucking stupid. Come back, Michael Caine. Your acting is actually amusing and interesting. Please come back and save me. <laughs> I always like to keep one Brit on hand in case I need to be rescued. Oh God, I wish. At this point, I might even accept Hugh Grant, though I'm not sure how capable he'd be in rescuing me. He'd probably be too befuddled to do so. So instead, as protection, I'm wearing a Beatles shirt. Just to be safe. Okay, movie. I've just about had it. I bet Nicole Kidman had a blast playing this role because what adult doesn't want to relive adolescence, but this is really, really starting to get on my nerves. Can we proceed with the story? As I suspected she would. Sweetheart, normality isn't all it's cracked up to be. Seriously, even if I still had to endure an injured knee while living in a magical world, well, I certainly wouldn't have to worry about the microwave being above the stove and my being short and... I need to stop talking about this. It's making me depressed. Fucking JK Rowling! Is your self-esteem low because you aren't participating in the real world? Yes, my self-esteem is very low. It just occurred to me that she's probably going to talk like this throughout the entire movie. Okay. If you can handle Snow White's voice, you can handle this. 
But Snow White was actually a kid! Ugh. There's something I have to tell you, Darren. I'm a witch. I'm a witch. I am a witch. Okay, I'm sure, I, I, I'm certain that not all the auditions would be this bad. Ew, what are you trying to do? Clearly Hollywood hates books because this is just fucking stupid. How my wife slept with a basketball player and I learned to love it. And what should I do with my life? Okay, I don't know about the basketball player thing, but you can't get what should I do with my life from a book. God bless you. She just sneezed on the books. Gross. <coughs> Okay, seriously, you're doing it wrong, idiot. Try being less conspicuous. Don't look, but Jack Wyatt is staring at you. My heart's pounding, and I am feeling very weird tingles. I know. He makes me sick, too. May I join you? Uh, sure. <laughs> no! Come back! Please don't leave me here with that. Anyone can act. Oh, that's right. This was released in 2005. The world has yet to suffer Kristen Stewart. How I wish I had a time machine. I'd like to go back to that time where everyone forgot she was in the panic room with Jodie Foster and no one heard from her until she resurfaced in 2008 to plague our youth with her foul, detached, monotone, and mediocre acting. So mediocre is putting it nicely. If I can act, you can act. Amen. I love you, random waitress. Please don't ever leave me again. You know what? I think those people over there just finished their plate of hummus. You might want to help them by clearing it. Thank you. No! <laughs> don't send her away. <laughs> Alone again. With these two. I'm extremely wealthy, which I'm about to prove to you by taking care of this bill for two dollars and thirty-one cents. Oh, that's so kind of you. You shouldn't have. Isabel Bigelow. Yes. I need you. I need a bucket. He makes me sick, too. Okay, so he coerces her to be on the show, and of course she has no perception of reality and doesn't get that it's all ten. And because she wasn't allowed to watch Bewitched, apparently, she decides to catch up on the show at home. She's actually wise, but I still don't think she grasps the concept. They became good. Hi! Hello? They delivered this while you're out, and I said I'd bring it over. I'm your neighbor, Maria Kelly. Another neighbor type, eh? I guess it's a good thing Isabel doesn't have a husband for you to point out his morning wood. <laughs> ah! Looks like we got a visitor. <laughs> I'm gonna be Samantha on Bewitched. Oh, I love that show. Is that the one about the genie? No. <laughs> oh, come on, Cheno. Your character is the normal one. And would actually know that Bewitched is about a witch and not a genie. That's I Dream of Genie. And I really hope they never make it into a movie. But seeing how Hollywood seems to hate everyone and greatly enjoys pissing on everyone's childhood, I'm not going to hold my breath. Hello, Isabel. Oh, thank you, my savior. In less than a week, I have become a rich and famous actress living in a, in a house I don't even have to pay rent for, just like every other person in the world. 
Well, Jack and Isabel are watching Bewitched, and I really wish I could watch the reruns of the show right now myself. They do a press conference for the revamp of the show, and we meet Shirley MacLaine's character Iris, who is cast as Andorra for the new show. Anything you say, Jerry. <laughs> Jack. See what I mean? That's a joke, right? Andorra used to refer to Darren as Derwood. No, I just forgot your name. I really wish I could laugh right now. Or have some alcohol to put me in a mild stupor to get through this movie. I'm 28 minutes in. It's like an hour and 30 minute long movie. I'm not even close to done. I don't know if you know this, but I'm Darren, okay? They, they replaced Darren on the original Bewitched and no one noticed! Dick York left the series in 1969 due to a chronic back ailment. Don't be a dick. Oh. Too late. My soul hurts. Stop it, movie, please. Stop. The only thing worse than this is if someone in Hollywood got the bright idea to redo The Wizard of Oz. Don't even think about it. Damn, I will kill everyone in the world! If you even think about it. So they run through the scenes from the first episode, Jack doing almost everything he can to stifle Isabel's acting. Come in. Okay, I can actually see Shirley MacLaine playing Endora. How great would that be? I think I need a drink. It's not that funny! Isabel overhears Jack and his agent Richie being absolute douchebags. I think she's got a little thing for you. It's freaking pathetic. Although, she does have kind of a cute little back end on her. I mean, I wouldn't kick out of bed for eating a box of crackers. I think this upgrades them to fucking assholes. Let's set fire to this trailer. Let's just do it. Just a big fake. We could electrocute him. There's tons of wires around here. I love you. So much. When my first husband left me, I wanted to cut the brake cables in his car, but instead we ended up having sex on the elliptical machine. How? Are you secretly an acrobat? I just didn't even know what been there. Look. You have three options. You put up with it, quit, or get mad. She chose mad, right? Oh, yeah. Action! It's my dog. My dog! And I will die if I do not have him back. Do you understand? I will die if I do not have him back! Oh, God! Oh. So many times I've wished I could do this to someone. Or some people, actually. Well, that was a bit much. Jack, you, you want to take it down a notch? <laughs> or five? Oh, yes, because your show has been so subtle! Action! Where art thou, dog? Thy canine lover. What's happening? Where is your hot breath upon the nape of my neck? We shall form a bond of brotherhood, man and beast. You shall lick my face and I shall lick your snout. I literally laughed at this for several minutes. I, I, I'm going to be in post editing this scene into what I'm saying and I'm going to be laughing for several minutes again. It's just... Ugh. Rolling! Esta mi perro. Mi... Mi perro es mi favorito. Mi perro es mi corazón. Muchos taquitos. Buena suerte. And it just keeps getting better! Oh my god. Where's my dog? Totally. I have a totally great dog.
I know how we can solve this, Darren. Well, let Satchel decide. Who names their dog Satchel? What the flying fuck? If the dog runs to you again, try this. Thank God you didn't have a great day. Actually, that's really witty. Daddy, what? Well, if it isn't my spellcasting magical daughter who gave up witchcraft. Thank you! But why did you have to appear in a box of fish sticks? I was provoked. I fell off the wagon. It was a one-time thing. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just curious, but when were you actually on the wagon? Tell me about Bewitched. Some have said it's a crass attempt by the network to mark a nostalgia. <laughs> Bad team slipped in. Bad. Now Isabel's aunt comes down the chimney. Ho ho ho. And tries to help figure out how to solve a problem like Jack. How do you solve a problem like Maria? You know, there's only one problem with a hex. There's no such thing as magic. I'm sorry, but where were you yesterday? We don't get fooled again. How on earth do you think that occurred? Wolfbane. <gasps> Grapefruit pits. Of all the stereotypical- No! Never mind stereotypical! Of all the fucking worn out cliches! Cause hexing him won't come back to bite you in the ass at all. Nope. The next morning the hex is in full swing and Jack has basically turned into a fanboy. I mean seriously. This is what it would look like if a fangirl was on the set during rehearsals. The interior apartment. Day, Samantha and Darren are sitting in their overcrowded apartment. Darren, I think we should buy a house and I found one that I love. You nailed that! Isn't it? Tell me I'm wrong. Just try. Isabel. Isabel. Hey. Hi. I'll be by at great. I mean, I'll be by at eight. Will Ferrell, did no one tell you there's such a thing as too much? I'm gonna puke. I need a bucket. I'm not going out with him. No, no, I'm not. I'm not. What? So it's witchcraft. Yeah, that's totally not going out with him. I'm just gonna open the door, undo it, and slam the door in his face. Hey, I just happen to be in the neighborhood with these roses. And a Cat Stevens CD. And this bracelet. And I thought I'd stop by. You're sweating. Like a pig. Oh, how do I? I got it. The way Nicole Kidman portrays Isabel reminds me of Sandy from Greece. She is Sandy from Greece in the 2000s. Sandy! Teddy? Is this your yes, purse? Indeed, in me. Proceed with oh my god, he is totally a fanboy! That's so weird! My parents were hippies and yours weren't. What are the odds? <laughs> the odds are very great, jackass. I wrote you a song. Hey, pretty lady. Come back here with my heart. I need a... I need a bucket. Where is my bucket? Let's make love in a hot air balloon. Uh, let's, let's make love in a candy factory. Let's make love in a petting zoo. Let's, let's make love you. at SeaWorld on the back of a killer whale. I am genuinely terrified for the well-being of this character and I don't even like her. Really, we need to see all of this again in reverse? Are we trying to pad out the movie? Is that what this is? I think so. Of course, after he sees the scores to the pilot and how terrible he did, he goes on a tangent and doesn't allow her to speak. But she becomes empowered and kind of makes me a little proud of her. Everything is about you. You, you are selfish and you are self-centered. Especially after the worm, Richie, Makes a crack about Midol. Hey, what? Listen, sweetie, why don't you go to your trailer and take a Midol? Hey, you be quiet or I'll give you a tail! Thank you, but you really should have given him a tail. 
No one's talked to me like that in 20 years. Once a week a woman talks to me like that. That is because you're a dick. I can't just walk back in there now. Once you show up on a golf cart, believe me, all is forgiven. I was fired. Oh no. That's right, I quit. Yeah. Yeah. Here, let me carry it. Your mother's here. Are you two getting along? You like Not exactly. Really, really great. One more time. I want to puke. They bond over Chinese in, in the studio and I still want to puke. And the next day at work it gets even more sickening and cutesy until Jack's wife shows up and Isabelle pulls some tricks. Didn't she leave him for a snowboarder slash underwear model? He's a moron slash idiot. That's right. Aren't they living together? Yeah, in my house. My house that I bought before I even met her. And I'm signing the divorce papers right now. And I'm moving out of the house this afternoon. Where are you going? Reykjavik. Where is it? Iceland. I love ice. <laughs> At the party, Jack makes a speech and Isabel feels guilty. Isabel. <sighs> to a woman who had never tricked me into thinking she was something she wasn't. I hope that touching speech hasn't made you think that you should tell the truth about yourself. I'm going to. Guess what? What? I'm a witch. Guess what? What? I'm a Clippers fan. I have to. I have been waiting this entire time to use this joke, so I have to. Guess what? I'm a witch. Guess what? I'm a Clippers fan. <laughs> mm. Hmm. Hello? That's not funny! Naturally, when it finally sinks in, he flips out like a... Pussy, pussy, pussy. Thank you. Am I gonna get pregnant? Because I can't get pregnant right now! Ow, that hurt my head in more ways than one! So they go their separate ways, boo-hoo. You guys look great. Happy Halloween! Dude, don't be it. Pussy, pussy, pussy. Seriously, we all know how this is gonna end. It's how all romantic comedies end. Nigel appears and they talk about love. He's idiotic and yet I find him completely charming. It's been like that since the beginning. Only now, I also hate him. Love. Yep, ain't that the truth. I'm so glad this movie is almost over. I am this close to drinking cleaning liquid in substitution of alcohol. Steve Carell shows up to knock some sense into Jack and be thoroughly, thoroughly annoying. Who wants to be with a witch? I do. Yep, called it. I go get him! Follow me! Follow me! Here we go! Come on! Here we go! I did not know that Steve Carell could be more annoying. That is quite an incredible feat. And of course they live happily ever after, like all of these fucking movies do. Do I really need to explain why this movie is terrible? I mean, whether you watched the show when it was on the air or on syndication, I can't imagine how you would think 
that this was okay. Nigel said that Bewitched? That's an insult to our way of life. I say that this movie makes a mockery of Bewitched. Oh my god, I'm so glad it's over. Until next time, au revoir. Bon nuit. It's, it's after dark, I can say bon nuit.